All right, YouTube, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. It is Saturday, May 18th. We got a full MLB slate to dive into in today's video. Like we always do when I go through each and every one of these games, I'm going to give you my lean on the side. I'll give you my lean on the total. We'll talk about any player props that we like within the game as well. But as always, guys, all of my final plays, if you do want to fade me, all of my final plays will be listed in the pinned comment of this video. In terms of yesterday, we have a nice little profitable night. Even from a win-loss perspective, it looks good, right? Four and three. Um, but the better portion of this is to call out that that parlay that I said yesterday, I said, should we just throw all the big heavy favorites into a parlay and see what happens? A bunch of you guys were like, yeah, let's do it, you degenerates, uh, in the comments. Uh, it does not come through, but we only put 0.1 units on it. So uh, ultimately, that's kind of like a four and two day, I guess, if you wipe that from the record. But nonetheless, profitable either way. So I shall take it. Um, don't mind to see more green than red on the recap there. And in terms of our ride of the day, damn. I don't know if we've had a ride of the day cash as quickly as this did. If I'm not mistaken, this was cash in the bottom of the first inning. We had Rays coming in with JT Real Muto over one and a half hits, runs, and RBIs. I believe he singled and then scored on that in that very same inning. So shout out to Rays. If you guys don't know what the ride of the day is, it's simple. Just use that hashtag ride of the day in the comments. I jump on board with one person's pick, ride with you, give you a shout out in the next video, win or loss. I also shout you out over on my Twitter slash X. Make sure to follow me there um, at FGuyBoston. But if you win, we continue to ride with you. So uh, looking forward to seeing what race has today. Let's make it two in a row. Um, and by the way, I don't say it much. I know I used to say it when the ride of the day was kind of new, but it's got to be a minus 145 or better odds play, and you got to kind of get it in um, sooner in the day or else we'll start looking for someone else. So make sure you all get your hashtag ride of the days in the comments because you never know when the spotlight will be shined on you, right? But um, all right, let's go ahead and jump into today's slate. First, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. We're talking Yankees taking on the White Sox here. Yesterday, the Yankees win. Not necessarily in like the dominant fashion I, I would have thought. They won 4-2, to two, so still covered their run line and everything like that. But uh, I expected the Yankees' bats to be a little bit hotter. Today, I could see that happening. Brad Keller on the mound for the White Sox. Um, decent ERA. I think he only has, um, what is it, one or two starts this season. He's pretty much taken a start from... Um, uh, I want to say from uh, Soroka, who obviously is not all that great. So, yeah, Brad Keller, one start in the year. Uh, not all that terrible, but ultimately ended up being a, a loss for him. Um, the Yankees' bats still should be able to kind of go out there and, and do their thing. Third best in average in the last 30 days against right-handed pitchers. First in WRC+, plus, second in on-base. First in OPS, ISO, and slugging. So, uh, I do think this could be a good spot for him. Do I love Luis Gil? Not necessarily, um, but this is a White Sox team. Luis Gill's going to throw over 60% fastballs. This is a White Sox team. Uh, runs above average per 100 fastballs thrown. Literally dead last in the MLB. So uh, I don't necessarily mind taking the Yankees in the spot. It'd probably be to look at their run line, obviously, um, but that's still not even the best odds. Minus 130-ish, so... We're probably priced out at this point, but I can't get to Chicago even uh, with a flyer in mind. In terms of a total, I've seen a decent amount of eight and a halfs around. So I guess if we look at this at eight, I don't mind considering the over. I don't think I end up playing it because, again, I think it could be a one-sided affair. Uh, Yankees going off for like six runs, and then all of a sudden it's like the White Sox crickets. You know what I mean? where your runs type of thing. So I do think that this could be a spot in which we pass on it, but due to the fact that the market has eight and a half out there, we could still get an eight. I guess I'll lean towards the over ever so slightly. Um, and then no major player props that I'm liking in this game at all. Next up, we got the Cubs taking on Pittsburgh. Cubs, massive favorites in this one. Now, they have dropped the first two games here in this series, but they have showed Imanaga on the mound today, who has a .96 ERA, a .94 whip, 2.2 FIP, an expected FIP that doesn't even jump that high to 3.1. Going up against Bailey Faulkner, who has a 4.15 ERA. The whip's actually low, 1.04, so give him credit there, but the FIP, fielding independent pitching, at 5.02. Expected FIP near the 5, so I think that the the books probably know what they're doing with this one in pricing the Cubs at uh, heavy, heavy favorites. Uh, when you look at them batting against left-handed pitchers, both these pitchers are lefty. Uh, you can see it's pretty damn even. So I think the big discrepancy or the big edge here, I should say, is the fact that we're looking at this pitching. And you can see Shota Imanaga pretty much greened out, right? Faulkner may have some struggles uh, overall. You look at the Cubs, too, covering in 62% of games at home. They've lost two straight now, so I think that they are due to some degree here in this spot. 
Um, and then Faulkner did pitch against this Cubs team uh, already. Six innings pitch, two earned runs, 1K, no decision. Uh, that was back on May 12th, so about you know a week ago or so. So it's not like he has a great track record, I guess, in terms of his last start against them either. I like the Cubs here, but maybe this is like a Cubs and Yankees parlay. In terms of odds to, to get that right now, um, it's not terrible. You're paying, uh, you're getting plus 102 over on FanDuel. So I could see that being the case here because I do think the Cubs bounce back. I don't think that they lose three straight here against the Pirates. So maybe a Cubs and Yankees parlay is able is a way that we can work both of those in there um, overall. In terms of a, a spot here, though, uh, I will say that I don't think that Bailey um, uh, Faulkner is going to strike these Cubs out all that much. So I could consider taking a peek at his under three and a half strikeouts. It's for plus 125 on drafting. So it's kind of like a more of a flyer type play just due to the fact that um, I think the Cubs are actually going to have a good offensive game. So again, four strikeouts isn't asking a lot of a pitcher, but we're going to go under here um, for that plus money. So keep an eye on the pin comment to see if we end up rolling with that. We did have an added play uh, yesterday with David Schneider and that one cashed for plus money. So uh, yeah, keep an eye on the pin comment. We can add things at any times, obviously with enough time before game time. Now, when we look at this game from a total perspective, uh, so far these two games um, have been five to four and nine to three. So we've seen some decent scoring here. This total obviously drops a little bit due to Shota Imanaga on the mound, but I'm believing in the Cubs bats today. So I still think that this could have a floor of like a five three type of a game because um, neither one of these bullpens is all that great. Bottom ten ERA rank and bottom ten WHIP rank for both teams. So I'm going to lean towards the over ever so slightly as well. Um, in terms of what we're looking at, I guess, from a, a weather perspective here in, in Regu, let's see if I can find that really quickly. Um, all right, sunny, wind blowing out to left field. Yeah, I could see this being an over. There's nothing that would tell me uh, to, you know, directly jump to the under. All right, Toronto taking on Tampa Bay. Kevin Gosman on the mound for Toronto, who hasn't really had the season that I think, you know, Gosman fans would have hoped to see. Um, but overall, I do think that he has a decent chance to to, to pitch well today against uh, this Tampa Bay team who ends up winning the game yesterday. Um, Gosman, in his uh, lifetime here, his career versus the current guys on the roster uh, of Tampa Bay is 63 plate appearances, a 193 average against rate there. So um, I do think that, he has a chance to pitch well. Zach Eflin on the mound for Tampa, um, who obviously has had a, a decent season so far. He's had his ups and downs, but 3.9 ERA, 1.13 whip, 3.8 FIP with a 3.6 expected FIP. So um, a little progression due from him there. I think this is a spot in which Tampa Bay... Um, I guess I should say both pitchers uh, do have decent outings. The issue that I have there is that this total is very low at seven point uh, seven and a half here. I'm still going to lean towards the under as my main play in this game, uh, but I'll take the favorite at home. I thought that Toronto was going to have the upper hand yesterday. They obviously don't. They end up losing the game um, four to three. And now Gosman on the mound. I think he's due for some progression. Like, how can he get much worse? He actually was looking okay for what? three starts and then has a terrible outing against Minnesota three innings pitched one home run 10 hits seven runs six K's like uh, almost 30 pitches an inning so hopefully he bounces back from that but I'm putting a lot of weight I'll tell you right now putting a lot of weight into his past success against Tampa Bay even this season he had a five and two thirds game uh, excuse me he had a four and two thirds game, uh, two hits, one run allowed. It was, a, it was a solo shot with six strikeouts against Tampa Bay back in late March. So even if he builds off that a little bit, I think that he could suppress it. But I like the under. I don't think a lot of runs are going to be scored in this game and then all of a sudden stitch next to it like a 10 to nine game. But I don't think a lot of runs are going to be scored in this game. I like Toronto and I like the under as well, but I like both pitchers here in this spot. Like could consider both pitchers over their outs line. All right, next up, we got Baltimore taking on Seattle. Castillo on the mound for the Mariners. I don't think we have a confirmed pitcher for Baltimore. Um, looks like it could be Dean Kramer here um, for today, so keep an eye on that. But Castillo's been pretty damn consistent. Last five starts, 1.2 ERA, averaging 7.5 strikeouts, averaging over six innings pitch. So I do like his spot here against Baltimore. In terms of how he's pitched against them in the past, 31 plate appearances against the current roster. Uh, nothing to write home about, and nothing that's too alarming at all. And he's obviously got great numbers uh, on the season as well, which he started kind of like, kind of, right? Like his first few starts were, were not necessarily the best, but you do have a Baltimore lineup that is struggling against right-handed pitchers over the last uh, the last 30 days here. Now I say that, um, and, and you think about, okay, well, everybody, I guess everybody and their grandmother thought that this is going to be a spot in which, you know, uh, 
they struggle yesterday, right? Like I almost bet them. Um, I know a lot of other people were were big time on the uh, the Mariners yesterday, and Baltimore ends up winning that game um, nine to two. So they were clearly like, yeah, I think we got this one. I think that they come back down to earth offensively a little bit today. Um, and depending on the pitcher that's going out there, like if it's Dean Kramer, I'll take Seattle, which I guess either way, it doesn't matter the pitcher. I'll lean towards Seattle, but something about how Baltimore, yes, they have not been hitting righties at all lately and went out there and dropped nine runs um, and got to, to Bryce Miller, you know, a little bit yesterday as well. I think he pitched, what, five innings um, and, and overall. In fact, what was his actual stat line now that I, I want to look at this? Bryce Miller specifically yesterday, right? Six hits. Four earned runs through five and a third with a home run let up and one strikeout. So, yeah, I, I just can't really see the the Orioles doing that ag again to a righty, and now we have a better righty on the mound. So I'll lean Seattle. I don't know if it makes its way into a final play because I'm a little scared that Baltimore, all of a sudden, you know, the gears are clicking. If that makes sense. In terms of a total seven and a half, um, I'm going to lean towards the under just because I don't think Seattle's offense is all that tremendous. And Baltimore, I guess, again, like I'm, you can tell how confused I am because if they continue what they've done the last 30 days, they shouldn't put up a lot of runs. But this over gets, or this under gets cooked if, if they do what they did yesterday again. But nonetheless, guys, uh, kind of a confusing spot for me. I'm not afraid to admit it. All right, San Fran taking on Colorado. Um, I know that everyone was excited about Colorado's win streak and whatnot yesterday, but they end up losing 10 to 5. So they're eight games in a row that they're seven games in a row that they had one um, comes to an end. Today, San Fran is just massive favorites. Um, Harrison on the mound for them. He's got a 3.42 ERA. Going up against Ty Block, who I don't like, I don't know where to make. I mean, he hadn't pitched or started in a while, right? Now it's a couple starts in the year, neither one of which are like terrible. Um, his most recent start, which is about a week ago, was pretty damn good, actually. Five innings pitched, one earned run, no walks, 14 pitches per inning. I guess you could say seven hits is a little bit high, but I don't think there's enough there to get me to say, you know what, there's a chance we roll with Colorado here today. So I'm going to lean towards San Francisco, but again, you'd have to probably toss them in some sort of parlay because being priced at minus 198 does not sound like it's a good singles bet. And I really don't like them or the idea of them having to cover that one and a half. Like, think about what Colorado did as underdogs for seven straight games. Winning games outright with one and a half in their pocket. Yeah, I don't know. That doesn't really scream a smart play to me overall. In terms of a total here, though, I'll lean towards the over. Um, if we have a game like yesterday, 10 to 5, something like that, easy cash, right? And I want to say before we get keep going, guys, um, I'm battling some sort of a sickness. So if you see my eyes glossy or if I sound nasally or I'm coughing in the middle, it's not because I'm crying because of, uh, you know, life. I'm, I'm just battling through some sort of a sickness mixed with allergies all at the same time. It's like uh, WrestleMania over here. Just got guys, guys coming in from the top ropes. Allergies, sickness, tiredness. It's tough. But you know what? We're grinding. We're grinding. And also, before we get to the rest of the slate here, I want to talk to you about Sleeper. They got a free square today. You, Darvish, over 0.5 strikeouts. It's way over there on the right of your screen. Um, if you guys do want to check out Sleeper, I'll have a link in the pinned comment. You get your first deposit matched up to 100 bucks. What I like about Sleeper, one, it is my favorite DFS player prop app out there. No question, okay? They have more selections. They have uh, more lines. They also have alternate lines for all of these plays, which is really, really cool. But what I like about them is each and every play you put into your slip has its own unique multiplier you can see that called out by the red circle on the graphic so every single play you make should be different in, in a sense it doesn't just follow the two for two equals three times payout or anything like that you can up to a hundred times over on sleeper which is obviously hard to do but absolutely crazy if you do do that uh, go check out sleeper guys i use this thing every single day i make tons of uh, content around it so if i'm using it i'm telling you that you'll like it too i'm uh, not just blowing smoke up your ass and, and trying to get go get you to download a crap app no this thing is legit if it's available in your state and you're not on sleeper yet go wake up try it out again they'll match your first deposit and you get this you darvish free square to add into your slip today which will just boost your payout overall because the dude's getting one strike all right go ahead and check it out that link is in the pinned comment it'll apply all the promos and everything automatically go check out sleeper guys i don't think you will regret it now let's go ahead and jump back into the rest of the slate here all right, Miami taking on the Mets. So we did capitalize on our thoughts from yesterday. We had Mets team total through the first seven uh, under, which was great. But think about how close we were. I said it in the video, how close we were to rolling with Miami on the money line. They won eight to nothing. And what's cool is that they haven't allowed a run in three games. Um, one nothing against Detroit, two nothing against Detroit, and then eight nothing against the Mets. 
jumping back into the dashboard here, the Mets still struggle against left-handed pitchers. Braxton Garrett is a lefty. He's on the mound for Miami. So I think that this could be another swing for the fences at Miami. Do I think that it's a, a lock of a play? No, you still have a pretty bad Miami team, if we're being honest. But look at this. At home, they're hitting the ball decently and not striking out. I guess that's all you can kind of ask. Going up against Luis Severino, who hasn't been like this superstar of, of a pitcher so far this season. He's been good, and I think he's been pitching better than, at times, I should say, better than what I would assume, but he's been inconsistent. Like, you could date back to the Tampa Bay game, right? They think that they had a really close game with him. He pitched, like, four and two-thirds or five, whatever it was. Um, no home runs, but led a bunch of guys on base and ended up having, like, four or five earned runs. The game before that, he went eight innings um, and let up one run. So this is a guy that obviously is going to have good stats, but he's been super inconsistent. If we have an inconsistent day from Severino today, you're looking at a decent little price tag, plus 112, plus 114, whatever you can get it at for Miami. Now, do I think that this is as good of a spot as yesterday? No, Jesus Lazardo was on the mound yesterday for Miami, right? So I do think that, you know, that is something to consider. But ultimately, I'm seeing enough here to potentially take another lean towards uh, Miami here in this spot, just fading those Mets bats against lefties. In terms of a total, I'll also lean towards the under. I know yesterday it was eight to nothing, um, would have gone over this line, but I could see this being like a four to two type of a game or a low scoring game today where, sure, maybe Severino has an on day, so forget what I said, right? But, you know, I don't think the Mets are going to get to Braxton Garrett uh, as inconsistent as he, you know, can be as well. Uh, I feel like I'm, I'm shitting all over uh, um, Severino here, but Garrett came back. Five and a third, one start so far this year. Uh, let up a home run, two walks, had a bunch of strikeouts, but five earned runs, right? So it was against Philly. Give him a little credit there, but uh, we know that he has been streaky in the past as well. But nonetheless, guys, this is ultimately going to be a lean towards um, the under. And I think, again, we could take a potential flyer on Miami, but we may, instead of backing Miami's bats, we may be able to look at like the Mets team total or something like that to be able to kind of say that Miami's going to play well while also saying the, the Mets won't have a good offensive day like we did yesterday. And I should mention this dashboard, guys, if you do want access to it, not this dashboard, that's covers.com, an amazing app, by the way, if you, or amazing site. Uh, this dashboard, guys, if you do want access to it, uh, there's going to be a link in the description as well as a button next to the subscribe button to join. That's becoming a channel member. We call you guys the ballers. Uh, $2.99 a month every day, or at least most days, you'll get literally a broken out uh, game look at this uh in this perspective where you have the pitching, you have the pitch mix, you have the batting, bullpen, win rates, um, batting against the pitch mix. Really, really cool stuff, guys. So if you do want to go and sign up for that, again, $2.99 a month, you'll get a new link every single day for the daily MLB dashboard. Go check it out, guys. Appreciate all of the ballers that have signed up and really have supported um, over the last month or so. Appreciate the hell out of you guys. All right, Philadelphia taking on Washington. It was kind of weird yesterday to not bet Philly first five money line because we had done that like in, in six straight of their games or at least first five run line or money line, something like that, right? Um, in terms of what we have today, I think that there's another spot that I like and, it, and it's going to be Philly's first five team total over one and a half, minus 145 over on DK right now. Um, I like that spot for them. I think that they have a decent game. Um, again, they cash this in six of their last 10 games. Um, I don't mind them on the first five money line again, but again, I feel like we've been just taking that so many times that it's at some point you got to be like, stop reaching for the cookie jar. Um, but Philly is going to be my lean, but somehow, um, some way in the first five, you have Chris Sanchez on the mound who has some decent numbers, um, has some good starts, some bad starts. So I don't want to like, you know, gas him up too, too much. Two good starts out of his last five, three, um, or excuse me, I should say three good starts, two bad starts, actually. Going up against Mackenzie Gore, who has been pretty consistent as of late. So I wouldn't say that there's a huge pitching edge over on the Philadelphia side of things, but batting-wise, there should be a decent batting edge here. Uh, you can see no matter what he's going to throw to Mackenzie Gore, Philly should be able to hit it and just look at their um, averages and WRC plus one out against left-handed pitchers. So to me, this is a spot for Philly. Um, keep an eye on the pin comments, see how we play it. I don't know if we go team total over one and a half first five or Philly first five money line, something like that. And we have another low game total here. And to me, I look at that and I'm like, all right, well, at first I was thinking that this should be um, an over type of a game because I want Philadelphia to score a bunch of runs, right? Uh, but even yesterday, like Philly winning four to two, I could see that happening again. So I think I'm going to lean slightly towards the under. And one thing that's really interesting is look at how many, like on this slate, how many seven and a halfs we have today for totals. Not many runs are projected to be scored today in the MLB. 
Next up, Cleveland taking on Minnesota, Minnesota here. Uh, Bailey Ober on the mound for Minnesota. Going up against Logan Allen for Cleveland. Uh, Minnesota was what I liked yesterday, right? They end up losing a close one, 3-2. to two. Uh, I could see this being a bounce-back spot for them as they hit lefties really, really well. Second best in average over the last 30 days. Third WRC+, plus, third OPS, third slugging, top 10 in ISO. Um, so, yeah, I think this is going to be a spot for Minnesota. I might lean a little bit more towards the first five in this spot due to the fact that Cleveland has a uh, bullpen edge um, by far and away, I would say. But we may not do that because Cleveland's bullpen, uh, two setup men yes went yesterday, their closer went yesterday, one of their mid relievers went yesterday. So this could be a spot in which we say, okay, maybe that advantage actually becomes a disadvantage because they might not have those guys. So, uh, yeah, I lean Minnesota on the money line or the first five money line. My one thing is Logan Allen is going to throw a lot of sinkers. Um, he's going to throw a lot of sliders and splitters and cutters. He'll mix it up. You know that I like, or if you don't know, um, I say it a lot, though. Minnesota, I love when the pitcher throws a lot of fastballs. That's a pitch that Minnesota hits really, really well. He's only going to throw about 15% fastball. So there is a little hang up there. But uh, nonetheless, I still do think I lean towards Minnesota, and I can see that being a final play. Bailey Ober's .88 whip on the season is definitely something to be proud of. So, yeah, I like that spot. And yet again, we have another total here sitting at 7.5. I think the Twins could put up potentially like 5 today. So uh, I'm going to lean towards the over, obviously, just due to the fact that uh, we could see that happening. So, yeah, give me the over in this spot. Um, but I'm much more inclined to back the Twins somehow, even saying Twins team total versus the, the, uh, the, the full total here. All right, another one that I don't want to spend too, too much time on here. We have Kansas City taking on Oakland. Kansas City, massive favorites here. Seth Lugo on the mound going up against Ross. Stripling, Lugo's had a decent year, 1.6 ERA, uh, compared to Stripling's nearly 5 ERA. Um, Kansas City wins 6-2 to two yesterday. I could see something similar happening. It probably doesn't make our final plays or any sort of parlay play or anything like that. But give me Kansas City in this spot. I don't necessarily love the run line, so that's probably why we end up sticking away from it. In terms of a total... If I see something similar happening, um, I think the A's could probably get a couple off of Lugo today, and I could easily see the Royals uh, kind of going to town on Stripling. Pause. No ditty. Uh, I love how you guys say that in the comments. Uh, so I do think that this could be a slight lean towards the over. But again, I said not spend too much time on it. Like, this isn't a game that I'm, I'm loving today, and that's just me being transparent. All right, Houston taking on Milwaukee here. So Houston's got Justin Verlander on the mound and then Bryce Wilson on the mound for Milwaukee. Um, I don't know where I come out on this. I think that Verlander has a good ERA and a good whip, but his FIP is at 5.09, and then his expected FIP is at 5.14. So he definitely has some regression it potentially in him right um Wilson on the other end nothing that I'd love to back I think this could be another spot in which we do what we did yesterday and just take both team total overs so we don't really even need to pick a side if one of them wins and one loses we kind of mitigate our losses but if it's a high scoring game and they both cash then all of a sudden you know we, we kind of double dip there Right now, Houston, you can get over uh, three and a half from 165. That might be something we roll with again, but might just go with the over four for, um, you know, minus 145. Uh, from a uh, Brewers perspective, over three and a half is going to be minus 105. So I think that that might be the play. Again, th the way that I look at that is you can get both lines at three and a half, right? This game total is eight and a half. So even if the te both teams were to score just over their team total, it'd be four, four. Obviously, the game has to end with one more run. So I understand that. Um, but there's a little bit of value in pulling the trigger on those, I would say. And then maybe even a potential lean towards the over because what am I saying, right? It's kind of crazy talk to be like, well, I like both them to score four runs. Obviously, one more run has to come in to end the game. Um, so maybe we go 0 0.25, 0 0.25, and 0.25 split across the team totals as well as the total in the game. But if you had to ask me, like, who's going to win this game? I think I would actually say Milwaukee for plus 150 odds. Like, I know Verlander should be the better pitcher here, but uh, for those odds, I don't want to really back Verlander for minus, nearly minus 160, right? So that's sort of the rationale, um, even though he has some really, really good numbers against this current Bruins, Brewers roster. Either way, guys, I think I'm looking for runs to be scored in this uh, versus anything else. All right, Texas taking on the Angels here. Uh, Urena on the mound for Texas going up against Patrick Sandoval um, are the, uh, the projected pitchers here. I do think that this should be a spot for Texas, um, just given the fact that we could fade Sandoval to some degree. Uh, but this Texas team is just so hard to, to sort of predict. Like, even yesterday, they got stomped. Like, where is the offense that we know and love? Um, know and love. It's like we love them. No, where's the offense that we've seen before, I guess I should say. But... 
in this spot, for them to, you know, win or to lose 9-3 yesterday, have not necessarily the biggest pitching advantages today. Coming in at minus 135, which is still on the brink of, like, being priced out in my mind, I think that that could be the move if we're kind of reading that line. Now, the total's at 9. I have seen some 8.5s on uh, a few books here, so I'm going to trust that Texas's offense gets going, and who knows? Maybe the, eight, uh, the Angels' offense keeps going, too. So I'm going to lean towards the over, but only if we can get it at 8.5. All right, Atlanta taking on San Diego. Um, Atlanta killing that big parlay last night. Uh, Bryce Elder on the mound for Atlanta has not had the uh, the year that you'd like him to have if you are on the uh, on the side of, of backing the, the Braves here. Going up against Yu Darvish, who has. Yu Darvish has three straight starts of no run allowed baseball so give him a little bit of credit there i will say bryce elders even ha either having like really good starts or really bad starts so if he's on i do think atlanta could get this one today but i was almost hoping to get atlanta closer to even odds as crazy as that might sound but um I'm going to back you, Darvish, in this one, but the way that I'm going to do that is lean towards the under eight and a half um, because I don't necessarily think the Padres' bats are all that, uh, you know, remarkable as of late. Three runs, zero runs, three runs, four runs, four runs, zero runs, two runs, three runs, two runs in their last nine games, right? Um, Atlanta, we know, can put up big numbers, but their last two games here, one run, run, one run, and now they're facing probably the better pitcher that they faced um, so far in, the, in that three-game stretch. So I'm going to lean towards the under eight and a half in this spot here overall. Um, I don't necessarily see any big hits off of Darvish or anything like that either. So uh, we should be fairly safe leaning in that direction. My one concern... Last time you, you Darvish pitched against Atlanta was a bad outing. Now, he has good stats against him in the past, and even this one was two years ago, so how much weight can we put into it? But uh, if he's got any demons about that, it could be an issue. But I'm just trusting the guy that is dealing right now. And like I said, he was the uh, fit, the sleeper picks, um, you know, .5 strikeout line today. So, you know, go get your strikeouts there, Darvish. Um, but give me the under as well as a slight lean backing you, Darvish. But I think that leaning towards the under actually is more so a way to do that. All right, Miles Mikolas, Mikolas, who knows, Mykonos uh, on the mound for Seattle, or St. Louis, excuse me, going up against Boston's Cutter Crawford. Cutter Crawford obviously having, uh, not obviously, I guess, but having a better year than uh, Mikolas in this spot. I do think that the Red Sox can bounce back here. They should have the better bats in this spot and the better bullpen. In terms of their bullpen's... Um, I was going to say taxonomy, but in terms of bullpen's tax, uh, like how much the guys have pitched, they should be ready to go uh, overall as well. So give me the Red Sox here on the money line. In terms of odds right now, um, they're slightly favored at minus 115 over on DraftKings. I kind of wish we were getting plus money after a big loss yesterday, but I think we can recognize starting pitcher edge, bullpen edge, and then what should be a batting edge for them as well. Um, we're getting still a good price, uh, you know, at minus 115. Total-wise, we're looking at eight. Uh, I could see this one being, you know, a five to four game Red Sox. Um, and, and in fact, you know, looking at the Red Sox, their offense has been doing as of late. Uh, three of their last four games, they've given you at least five. St. Louis, they've given you at least seven in three of their last four. So who am I to say that this game goes under? Let me let me let me lean towards the over in this spot. Arizona taking on Detroit. I was so close to adding this to our final plays yesterday. Detroit money line. I talked about it. I liked it. I wanted to back Tariq Skubal. Uh, they win 13 nothing. So, of course, I mean, I'm sure if I played it, Arizona wins 13 nothing. But, um, you know, nonetheless, had a profitable night last night. I guess we can't complain. Today, you have Zach Gallon on the mound uh, going up against Jack Flaherty, who a lot of people don't like Jack Flaherty. Um, we do on this channel because he's cash for us strikeout-wise so many freaking times. Today, I don't necessarily see being one of those times. I don't necessarily think he has a bunch of strikeouts, but I think he can keep them in this game for sure. So when I look at this and I see that, you know, the, the Diamondbacks are massive favorites, um, you know, minus 155, I actually take a peek at Detroit plus one and a half on the run line um, for minus 155 as well. Like, I think that that could be the move today. I think Jack Flaherty can, you know, minimize Arizona offense to some degree, right? And... If Arizona's offense isn't cooking, Zach Gallon's dealing, maybe Jack Flaherty's kind of dealing in and of itself, I think that this game could stay within one run no matter which way we're looking. So if we have plus one and a half in our pocket, that may be the move. So give me Detroit on the run line plus the plus the points, plus the uh, runs here. In terms of the total, um, I like the over because I could see this being like a, a close game, sort of back and forth all, all games. So yeah, I'm going to lean towards the, uh, the over in this spot as well. But I do really like Detroit. Um, the idea of, of them keeping it close. When I say the over after his gassing up the pitchers, if this game was at eight and a half, I probably wouldn't like the over. So keep that in mind. I could just see this being like 
four to four minimum uh, in the spot, which obviously that ends in a tie. That doesn't work. But like, I don't want I don't want it to sound like I like the over after just gassing up these pitchers. Like seven and a half is a low number. You know what I mean? All right, last game of the night, we got the Dodgers taking on the Cincinnati Reds. Um, uh, Walker Bueller, excuse me, on the mound for the Dodgers going up against Graham Ashcraft here in this spot. Uh, the Reds had a nice win in game number one of the series, and the Dodgers bounce right back and win it in game number two. This is probably, again, another boring breakdown where Dodgers, I don't think they have the better starting pitcher, but they get the better bullpen and a far better offense. So I'll lean towards the Dodgers, but... Maybe, again, it's some sort of a parlay throw-in piece or something like that, which stinks because if you don't like it all that much, don't throw it into your parlay. You know what I mean? Like, it kind of stinks to be like, hey, I like this. You throw it in your parlay, and then all of a sudden it's like, they just killed my parlay, right? Um, But overall, also lean towards the over, assuming uh, that Bueller doesn't have that great of a night. And then, you know what? I think the Dodgers can get to Ashcraft, so... That's going to wrap for today's show, guys. Hope you guys did enjoy. Uh, appreciate everybody tuning in. I, I know I, well, I I know I don't feel the best sick-wise. And like I said, allergies, sickness. My voice feels terrible. Hopefully it doesn't come through the camera or the mic. But if it does, I do apologize. Uh, but nonetheless, guys, I'll catch you guys in the next one. All right? Peace out.